What's up, brothers? <laughs> What's up, beautiful people? Hello, you beautiful people. My name is Davi. I'm joined by Abe, and welcome back to another Tony Tuesday. How you doing? For our viewers and listeners, we hope you guys are doing well. Just a quick heads up, this episode is also available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, specifically the discussion portion of the show. And if you're looking for an uncut reaction, we are on Patreon. Um, in the link in the description, you'll find the link to our uncut reaction to this episode. And thank you so much to our patrons and also our subscribers here on YouTube. We love you guys. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing, liking this video, and also hitting the notification bell. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing. I'm good. <laughs> you're doing. You're doing. I'm doing. I'm excited because uh, we've clearly been getting a lot of comments about yeah. these uh, episodes, which we will get to. But I feel like we're we're getting to that point in The Sopranos now where we really start seeing. Like I feel like we've said this already before, but like <laughs> start seeing shit go down. It's getting interesting. Yeah. It, it, interesting. Yeah. I heard the, the IMDb is saying that this is one of the best oh, episodes. Like one of the of, top, yeah, this is the top on all of IMDb. On kind of all of thing. IMDb. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. IMDb is like they have some niche like mm -hmm. things that that like are really highly rated there. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to say Sopranos isn't highly rated across the board, but mm -hmm. I I'd imagine that Sopranos like the biggest episodes will be like yeah. nines or eights on there. Yeah, I think this one is nine point something. Oh my god, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, if no. anyone knows anything about IMDb? That's like ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Charlie could not be with us again for schedule conflict reasons, so you're just stuck with the two of us. But his beautiful face will be back on soon enough. Do not worry. Do not fret. He'll be be back we miss you charlie thanks for thanks you for editing sir we love you. the internet would never see this video say thank you to charlie in the comments right now what's up brother <laughs> i was like how long can we go without a catch reference bro <laughs> All right, should we get into the comments before yes. we start the episode? This first one comes from Poshana, and it says, The next two eps are bangers of astronomical proportions. All right, brother, I trust you. <laughs> I really I, 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 I really, I really want to believe it, but I do I do believe you guys. Whenever you say yeah. that it's a banger episode, it's a banger episode. And also the thumbnail of this we already talked about, it's like Christopher and Polly with like gashes in their heads. So yeah. like clearly some shit goes down. <laughs> next one comes from Moist Mouth Mags. What a name. Firstly, love your reactions and discussions. Actually, the first Patreon I've subscribed to. Wow. Thank, thank you. you. Um, secondly, the next episode is widely regarded as one of the best. It is tied with a season five episode for highest rated and is consistently in people's top three. Thanks for helping us for Sopranos fans vicariously see the show for the first time again. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate <clears throat> the support. It's been really cool to see people like get excited about where we're at. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, man, they don't know what's coming. <laughs> like, yeah. Thank you for subscribing to the Patreon. And even if you're not subscribed to Patreon, thank you for being here to the, with the journey. And thank you for, for all the insight you've added as we've watched the show. Yes, 100%. Like, <clears throat> it's awesome that Tuesday now everyone is like, oh my gosh, it's Tuesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the last one here comes from Joe James. You guys caught the parallel with Jackie Jr. giving Meadow a gift to Tony's gift giving to Carmela through all his infidelities. I feel like most reactions I've watched didn't catch this. As far as Janice, I've always viewed it as despite her being an ass, she's Tony's sister and he's going to try to look out for her. It's the reason why anytime she screws up, he's stressed about it. Just look at the Livia situation. It took her trying to kill this man for Tony to utter a negative word about her. He fought so hard to defend his mom despite her being horrible to him. Besides all that, can't forget he's a mob boss. It'd be terrible look from the outside looking in if his sister got smacked around and he did nothing. Yeah, that's very true. But yes, I, I think to that point, the, the mob part is important because like obviously you want show of respect you don't want people in your family being treated like shit and people just think like you let whatever happen to them but i do think there's also the kind of like big brother instinct that he has towards janice that comes up no matter how annoyed he is of her which is very annoyed a lot of the time but yeah it's still a it's like one of those humanizing factors about tony the greatest episode of all time Look, imagine <laughs> <laughs> okay we are getting into season three episode 11 full hour this is a full hour yeah I wonder if we're gonna have a ugh. yeah. I we I saw I think I saw one comment where um they were upset that people were hyping this episode for us really <laughs> because they wanted a surprise. Yeah. yeah, and also that like your expectations like go through the roof 
but yes but here's what i'll say so much random shit happens in the show book, right yeah that like it's really hard for you to like predict what's gonna mm-hmm. happen like we might be smart guys but we also still like not spoiling stuff for ourselves mm-hmm. and like we can have high expectations but still like be surprised yeah. what the hell happens because we'll have, we have no idea like i have no, no idea what's happening in this episode yeah we no, don't no, no, know no, no. we go in blind except for the thumbnail <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh no just a bad minute <laughs> Uh oh, it's Trello. All right, am I bugging? Y'all, y'all can let me know. But does she remind you of Marissa Tomei? Tomei. Who's Marissa Tomei. I'm bad she, with names. Uh, she plays. She's from my cousin Vinny, and she uh, also plays uh, at May. And um, oh, a little bit, just, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I can see the resemblance. Yeah. I s- Hello. Great song choice, by the way. Hello. Is Tony's there? Oh, no, I'm sorry, he's not. Who's calling? This is Mrs. Washington from the high school for little Anthony. Mrs. Washington. <laughs> That is crazy. Tony, it's me. I'm sorry to call you. I know we are broken up, but my religious medal. I look everywhere and I think I lost it. I think it's on the Stugat. Oh, okay. Who is on the board with you? I'll be sure and tell him. Is that okay? Pending shit. Two weeks, not even a kiss. Hello? She's got to be like calling bullshit though, right? Yes. There's no way. Yeah, I need that look right there. Mm-hmm. I can tell. Yep. Her phone call. It's an old girlfriend. Oh, you mean she wasn't from the school? My God, she sounded so convincing. <laughs> yeah, if you're trying to be honest, why'd you lie? I don't want to piss you off. So it's really more about you then? What are you talking about? I didn't want to hurt your feelings. What you said was that you didn't want to piss me off, which implies that you'd have to deal with me, which was more about sparing you than my fucking feelings. Yo, she just turned a knob real quick. <laughs> Crazy how he just started to tell the truth. Christmas. She's a loose cannon. I mean, we already knew that, but I know Tony's loving that though. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> hey, my man's getting his. There you go, as you go. should. Self care. I'm Polly. I'm like Jared McCain from Duke. You know that Ruski, Valerie works for Slava. Well, they owe Sil five grand. I need you go pick it up tomorrow. Why not Sil go? I'm sending him home. He's dying from the flu. I didn't hear you, Tom. He's sick. He's got the flu. I'm supposed to take my mother to Social Security tomorrow. So you do it after. I don't even know why we deal with these people. What I guess? They make us money. Thank you. <laughs> Classic answer. Oh, wow. Carmelo's back. Yeah. She's dating a boy, mm. uh, the son of some friends of the family. She mm. was dating a different boy, a young African-American man. Yeah, they broke up. Actually, he broke it off with her. Believe that? Well, you didn't exactly give him much choice, Tony. Mm. Well, so now I'm responsible for her being with Jackie. I'm just saying that if you Kinda. hadn't been so mean to him, who knows? Maybe she might not be with this one. He's holding back, bro. <laughs> I find it very interesting that you're able to talk about this without rancor. Actually, we haven't been arguing as much lately. Hmm. It's the therapy. We're learning how to communicate. Or buy a gift to shut Mm. the other person up. Yep. 36. I know Spanish. Oblique? Oblique. Oh, my God. Come on, you're in college. Oh, he does. She doesn't know. Not an English major. He's supposed to be in med school. Isn't an oblique also like a muscle? Idiot. This guy's dumb. (laughs) Pretty sure it is something, yeah. As in, uh, how about giving me some? Oh, he's such an idiot. Only kidding. Yeah, it's a lie. He's scummy, bro. Unless you want to. Jackie. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Want to do some X? I'm already taking Nyko. Bro. Yeah, though, this guy, he's he's like just chasing the the high, the highs of yeah. life. Uh. Mind if we finish this tomorrow? You're leaving? I gotta let you get some sleep. Oh, uh, poor Meadow. I feel for her. I really do. Mm-hmm. Russians? They're not all bad. Okay. Oh, what yeah. gonna happen to these two? Cocksuckers moved nuclear warheads into Cuba, pointed them right at us. That was real. I saw that movie. I thought it was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? KGB? Open up. KGB. You want? A little early, no? Someone had said that this guy has a voice actor on GTA on oh. the GTA Four. Oh, really? Yeah, the Russian guy. What the heck is that? What's this? Okay, good. It's not just me. <laughs> wow, the universal remotes were crazy back then. So, Valerie, you got Silvio's money? Money is on an entertainment center. Better not be any rubles in there. <laughs> oh Put God. remote on docking station. What? Universal remote. Put it down on docking station. Bro, you gotta charge it, brother. You got some balls, my friend. Whoops. Oh. Paulie. What? It was an accident. You want to f*** here? Cocksucker. You come to my house. What did you call me? Ooh. <laughs> where the f are you? <laughs> 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 
yo, this episode, everything is going zero to 100 so fast. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What'd you do? Would I have a choice? I killed him. Why didn't you just put the remote? I think he's dying. Must have cracked his windpipe. That's it for him. What are you fucking doctor now? What are we gonna do? Pull the camera. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that doesn't look suspicious at all, bro. <laughs> nice body shaped rug you got there. I'm feeling very sheepish. I'm dead. About the other day. I had no right to even answer your phone. It's all right. Sorry I lied. Can I open it? <laughs> bro, she's got him on a string. It's from Morocco. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where your favorite people are from, Tony. Nah, no way. Are they showing up at this place? We saw that guy, but we had a problem. You are just supposed to pick up the money. We did, but he started giving us some shit. Prick sucker punched me. God, oh, my happened. God. I'm supposed to meet, meet Slava later. What the f*** am I supposed to say to him? Okay, nobody was around. Yikes. You use your own judgment, but whatever you decide, you do it way the f*** away from me. You understand? Well, I... Mother f that was a big waste of water. Look, it was just some work shit, okay? Mm -hmm. She can get mad again. Mm -hmm. You got time for lunch? You are my lunch. <laughs> Not gonna lie. She was smooth with that. <laughs> that would have that gotten you? Yeah, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. Let's take them down to Pine Barrens. It's fucking deserted down there. We take them in the woods, dig a hole, and the story. Things with you and Carmela seem to be going well. It's the therapy. Such a liar. She knows it too. Is he gonna say? Oh, look, it? I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh, oh my god. Seeing somebody, patient of yours. Think she's gonna put it together right away? Oh, he already, you know? He just, he just said her name. She's smart, she's sexy, she's Italian. Italian? Is she Italian? Do you think having met her in therapy holds any significance? Well, maybe she reminds me of you. All right, this man is uh... smart, sexy, he's Italian. <laughs> There's three prerequisites <laughs> for being Tony's woman. Do you think lying to Carmela in therapy is the best thing for your panic attack? Things are going good between me and Carm. You said so yourself. It's all predicated on a lie. Predicated on my ass. What's the difference? I'm content. I'm relaxed. Yeah, it's all about you, Tony, right? It's interesting because he's like, he focuses on like the pre like the present so much. Mm -hmm. Makes me happier than all of your Prozac and your therapy bullshit combined. You're in a honeymoon period, yeah. brother. It's gonna hit the fan, bro. <laughs> like, he really doesn't even know Gloria. He she, she, no. he had one run-in with a blow-up from her that you can already tell. Like, she can get worse than that. And it was, like, the slightest little thing. He lied for 10 seconds and then turned around and told her the truth, and she almost freaked out. So, imagine. I don't know why. Anytime I see, like, car by itself in the woods with some snow, I'm like, shit is gonna... Some bad <laughs> shit's happening. What do you think? I think we should have ate. <laughs> this man is so... Ah! Oh, my God. <laughs> Hawksucker's still alive! Give me this shit! Keep following it. I'll put one in your head. F*** your f***ing mother! Yeah, that's uh... This is all because of a universal remote. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> Thing with like a big ass calculator, too. Think this is far enough? It'll do. F*** you doing? You think we're digging a hole? That's right, shithead. Get to work. I know the ground's kinda hard. But give it some of that Siberian action. Idiot, yeah, he's gonna get hit. We're still the way to some Yakhod now! Yeah, he's Russian. <laughs> you think the cold bothers him? How far is it to Atlantic City? Ah! Oh! I knew it. Ah! Oh! Ah! They're gonna start a war. This is gonna start a war. Mm. All right, I see this shit now. Motherfucker! Ah! He gets shot by Polly. That's what it looked like for me a second. Oh! What the fuck? What? I got him, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> nah, this man is the Terminator. There's no way. <laughs> wow. If his head's probably hanging off. Get some blood over there. Where is this prick? You sure I hit him at the head? Yeah, fucking positive. I thought so too, but. Yeah, no, I, I saw blood. They actually like, took him to the worst possible place. This is his element where going off the Russian stereotypes, this man is used to being in the snow. <laughs> wow, and choice in hot. Or the accessory. I don't oh, know what yeah. you call that thing. That's definitely like Russian though. Why would he oh, be calling this? them on his house phone? Hello. Where the f*** you been? We're down the pine barrens. Did you wrap the package? Not yet. We were about to. We had a little problem. The package hit Chrissy with an implement and ran off. Ran off? We're looking for it now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I can't hear you. You're breaking up. I said we're looking for it. Is there any way the package could survive? Don't. God damn it. Is there any way the package... Oh, shit. I got a meeting with Slava. I could be walking into a 
fucking buzzsaw. Yeah, Abe, I think you're right about that. I sure. didn't know because I didn't know if he was going to survive, but now? Uh -huh. Gotta be dead by now, right? How could he not be? Fuck it. Let's just go. Oh, my God. Yo, what if he stole the car? Imagine, bro. <laughs> yeah, this guy, it's like a winter soldier. Like, he definitely just walked back to the car. We just follow our own footprints. Come on. Oh, my God. They're going to get lost in the woods. I have no idea where they're going. We walked in a circle. How's that fucking possible? Let's reason this out. <laughs> we're driving south, and the sun's setting there. What good's that do? At least we know what direction we're headed. Yeah, but we're still fucking lost. Oh, boy, bro. The gun on the table. Look at that. We got a full desert eagle on that. Slow. Tony, Tony, come in. My daughter, Ilana. Say hello to Mr. Soprano. Hey, do Beautiful girl. Brilliant student. One day she goes to Harvard in Massachusetts. It was Ivy Day the other day. It was? Yeah, I saw all the TikTok reactions. Family. Nothing is more important. Yeah, that's why you got to plan ahead. 200 here. Okay. Same drill. Tile of men. Four days. Clean as whistle. We drink. I wonder if he knows yet. Oh, there's no way he knows yet. Yeah, see, he's looking at that Desert Eagle being like, uh... Tony's overthinking. Valeri, who knows? He gives Silvio the money, yes? Because I told him. I don't know. I wasn't there. It's a load. Uh, oh. oh. What you want him, ain't it? Uh, this is bad. He was like brother to me. He was like brother to me. But now he's tragic figure. What do you mean? The alcohol, the drugs. Oh, oh okay. His graces to his family. Breaks my heart. Okay, so they've had a fallout. Wow. In Chechnya, he saves my oh, life. They're Chechen. Oh, all right, Barry. That's very on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> very emotional. I would do anything for him. Oh, yeah, no. Bro. I'm, I'm getting nervous for Tony now. Hey, it easy. <laughs> we'll fight. I'm busy. My head is killing. And he's starving. The man still hasn't eaten. Yeah. Hello? The guy you're looking for is some kind of ex commando or some shit. He killed 16 Chechen rebels single handed. 16? Dude, that's <laughs> <Yo>. crazy. <laughs> Commando, he killed 16 Chechen rebels single handed. Get the f. <laughs> With the interior ministry. Guy, some kind of Russian green beret. This guy cannot come back to tell this story. I hear you. Are you there? I can't believe they don't have hypother hypothermia yet. Like, that's with that little jacket. I mean, it's probably not like below like zero. Mm -hmm. Guy was an interior decorator. His house looked like shit. <laughs> Oh my god, dude, this is so bad. Quick snap. You said yourself I hit him in the head. The Rasputin, this guy. <laughs> oh. See? Come on, he's running. Shooting. Yeah, he's so stupid. <laughs> oh. Cut, Wally, come on, I think I got him. Oh, it's a deer. If we were trying, we wouldn't have come close. I lost my shoe. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Hello? Hey, how you feeling? I'm like shit. When are you coming over? I gotta get my mother's car inspected. At night? I was about to say, it's nighttime. My mother needs the car and I gotta move all the dumb shit out of here. I'll call you later, okay? Yeah, okay, bye. Mm. This guy's such a liar, bro. Pooh. <laughs> yeah. Those are all the words. Yeah, she's yeah. like, ah. Yeah, he's, this guy's literally doing three letter words. He can't be doing what. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> yeah, now his foot's gonna fall off. Yeah. A thousand percent. I could lose a foot. How could we be lost like this? We're in New Jersey. <laughs> we see some of these berries. Are you nuts? No. Shit like that could be poisonous. You don't know. Okay, thank God Polly has some sense. Well, yeah. The car? Looks like a truck. Back wheels are gone. <sighs> thank you, God. The ears feel like they're gonna fall off. Your ears. Get me something for my foot. Take your jacket off, bro. Like wrap it or something. Here's my own body. How the hell did they get out of this, bro? He's fucking I, dead. I know, but 16 Czechoslovakians. Bro, he looks like Einstein. His hair, like, coming out <laughs> like this. You think this man's gonna ask questions at dinner? Or AJ's before? gonna ask questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still no phone call. What's the matter? You're not hungry? Late lunch. Nah, no way. Could be him out there stalking us. Probably thinks we left anyway. If he's alive. Which he ain't. He's alive. Yeah, we didn't see him die. Oh, is that like... There's some ketchups and shit. Give me some. <sighs> This is like survival of shit. Not bad. <laughs> Mix it with the relish. Mix it with the relish. <laughs> Ma, what are you guys doing here? Three hours at the eye doctor. Glaucoma. I may need an operation. Oh, shit. We're still here. No good. That's really f***ing great. We're really lost. I don't know what the f*** you're talking about. How about some advice? Oh. You want my advice? You stay there. You stay there. Water, then you oh, find this guy. Find this We're guy. trying. Thanks a lot. Well, I should be happy about this. You know, sometimes you don't think before reacting. Oh, oh my gosh. Guys, shut the punch. You. 
It's just, uh, we'll talk later. Yeah, he can tell he's bullshitting. He's like, bro, this guy's stories are not adding up every time he talks to him. Or he just said that shit out loud. Mm -hmm. My father has glaucoma. <sighs> Can't even think straight. It's Jackie, leave a message. Hi, I'm Bajam. I'm really sorry. I need to borrow your car. Oh my gosh. No. Yikes. No, bro. I wanted to be treated like shit, I'd get married. Sorry. Something came up. Dinner is fucking ruined. Well, go out. Any way you want. Well, don't be like that. Consider it prick. Said I was sorry. You were supposed to be here three hours ago. Here now, aren't I? No way, bro. These men are on Survivor. <laughs> so paranoid, bro. Said the also uh, naked and afraid. That's another one. Yeah. <laughs> he just, you know what the funniest thing about that fire is? He just wants to light a cigarette. <laughs> That's literally it. With Silvio's money, he should have got it himself. Cocksucker, I got the sniffles, and we're stuck out here. And it's not even give me the shit, your uncle. Yeah, blame Tony now. You had to hear him on the phone before, talking to me like a child. You have any idea the money I made for him over the years? Or his old man before him? <laughs> this is not going to be good. Oh, they're like sitting ducks in this thing, too. I've been working on a plan. We're in a truck, right? It had to get here somehow. There's got to be a road out. Give me your shoes. I can go get help. F*** you. You're not leaving me here. You don't trust me? It's stupid. Pitch dark out there. And what's your f***ing plan? Eat catch your packs? We should have stopped at Roy Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, those phones like those things last like days. Battery. That's a, that's a twenty hour battery right so, there, man. Yeah. It's me. Come fucking get us. You don't even know what the fuck you are. There's a dirt road at the turn off. We're parked about a mile in near some picnic table. When I find the car, then what? I don't know. Stop yelling. We're in a truck. Do these phones have like radio interference. That's what it sounds yeah. like. All right, just stay calm. Break some food, all right? Some fucking shoes too. She's gonna freak out. Mm -hmm. She's gonna bug. I gotta go. Are you kidding me? It's an emergency. What do you want from me, huh? Well, what do you think, you fucking whore? Just calm down. I don't got time for this shit. Oh, now you're gonna leave your low life piece of shit. You know what? Here, take your fucking dinner. I fucking hate you. Yeesh. Oh my God, Metal. Doing this would make me as bad as he is. Maybe we should go. Sorry I had to wake you. In chemo, I'm awake throwing up half the night anyway. I haven't seen him in a while. I know. It's been a minute. Call Bobby. He's on his way. Oh, he's going. Bobby's going down. What have you been eating? Steak? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not quite eating the steak. <laughs> <laughs> Duck Dynasty ass, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> 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 oh my god so I gotta change my shirt As Bobby has got an extra bro That's crazy I'm not gonna lie Anytime he talks I feel bad for him bro. Yeah. <laughs> Be strong She's gonna confront him Oh I mean we knew this I can't believe you did this to me What are you doing here? I loved you Who the hell are you? F*** you bitch What'd you say? Don't ever call me again Metal, wait. What is the matter with you? It's Tony Soprano's daughter. Oh, what do I care, asshole? He's such an idiot, bro. He's it's so Tony Soprano's stupid. daughter. Yeah, you. So you should have been with her in the first place. Like, what the? Dad and me used to go every year. Sorry, I laughed at you before. It's all right. One time we went hunting. Saw a sign said bear left, so we went home. <laughs> Want you to know, I appreciate you taking care of my uncle. Finally, someone said something nice to him. Mm -hmm. I feel bad for this guy so badly. He really loves you, you know that? Come on, that old prick. I'm serious. He talks about you all the time. I know you had your problems, but I don't know. I wish he was my uncle sometimes. Wow. I feel bad, man. He's like a big teddy bear. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? Don't go out there. I'm eating those berries. I'm telling oh, you, they're poison. No, I don't no. give a shit. At least I won't die hungry. Uh, yikes. They made it. He took the car. Car, yeah. Car's not the car. there. Damn. I can't stop laughing at Bobby. That's crazy. <laughs> Where's their car though? Maybe they left. I wouldn't leave without calling. Let me try them again. No service. Now they both have shit service. So. Tony? Tony, I can't hear you. Motherfucking cocksucker! That Tony? What'd he say? I don't know. Oh! Do that by your own window. I don't want to smell your piss. Fuck you. Don't make me pull a rank on you, kid. You, Paulie. Captain or no captain, right now we're just two assholes lost in the woods. Do yourself a favor, Chrissy, and go back to fucking sleep. Why? So you could choke me? What? Think I'm stupid. 
I heard you on the phone trying to blame this on me. Oh, I didn't see this coming. You f***ed up with the Russian prick. Now you're worried about Tony. You wait till I'm asleep, then you'll choke me so he'll just have your version. Choke you right now, you f***. <gasps> you hear you want you cocksucker? Put it down, Chrissy. You know how fast I can run. I'll leave you in the f***ing dots. Holy shit, we've been through. You think I really care you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Promise me you won't leave me here. I'm not gonna leave you. <laughs> He's got that like um it's like one of the sign signs of hypothermia. Well wait till it's light, then we'll head in. Yeah, it's not like two hours away from the sunrise yeah. probably. One oh one. Well, let's get some fluids in you. We'll send you home later. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you okay? <laughs> she was out all night. I couldn't stop her. We drove out to Jersey. I caught them together. She was a real whore, too. Oh, my God. That's horrible. <laughs> it's all my fault. I shouldn't have pressured him like that. You are better off without him, Meadow. Oh, my God, bro. He was, like, manipulating. Whatever, Matt. He was such a trap. No, he wasn't. He was great. <laughs> oh, come on, Meadow. But it's tough, man. It's tough. That's something like Balenciaga would do. Tell me not. Something that what? Balenciaga would do and sell it for like five thousand dollars. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Holy Christopher! First place I'm hitting is Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him. What's the matter? Get things loose already. His foot's gonna fall off, bro. He's gonna need to amputate that shit. Uh, mother. <laughs> That's no deer hunter. Holy! Christopher! Tommy! Over here! <laughs> <laughs> you guys alright? Jesus Christ, look at you two. All night in this fucking hoe hole. Is this a spy? Yeah, yeah, but. He stole the car. The car's gone. Are you sure this is where you left it? Positive. I can't believe it. Probably kids or something. What if it was the guy? You got the money? In the, in the car. car it was in the car that's all i asked you to do paulie sorry t it couldn't be helped guy lunged at us listen tom i know i fucked up but it's okay really just forget it uh, that face that he made is some mm -hmm. of the similar stuff that i feel like he would act towards pussy mm -hmm. i hit him in the head tom i saw it with my own eyes impossible this fuck made it out of here alive hard to say flesh wound maybe headshot i don't know on the other hand anything's possible you're a captain what do you want to do Let's go home. All right. Duh. Obviously, he wants to go home. But let's be clear on this right now. This cocksucker crawls out from under a rock. He's your problem, not mine. You deal with Slava. You take the heat. You pay the price. Capiche? Fine. Duh. Obviously. There, like, there's no choice there. All I can imagine is, like, after something like that, like, food must taste amazing. <laughs> heat must feel like God's gift. <laughs> yeah, Tony's not happy with him. No. He is heated. Because one minute she's fine, next minute she's a fucking lunatic. Yep. Why does everything gotta be so hard? And I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I do the right thing by my family. Doesn't that count for anything? I think we should discuss what attracted you to Gloria in the first place. And Irina before her, depressive personality, unstable, mm -hmm. impossible to please. Does that remind you of any other woman? His mother. Freud is clapping from his grave, bro. <laughs> Wow. wow. What a way to end that episode. Yeah. That was so chaotic. Yeah. Straight up. <laughs> straight up chaos. I mean, you you knew from the thumbnail, like, some shit had to go wrong. And also, like, for people who aren't able to see, I don't know if Charlie could put it on the screen, but the thumbnail is literally just the two of them standing in the woods with, like, the gashes on their head. <laughs> and I was like, these two together like in a tense situation is like a disaster. Because mm -hmm. there's already, like, beef. And whatever. There was already beef, and it's... This is so great by David Chase because since the season started, um, they've been arguing they've a been lot. They've been arguing a lot. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's been a lot of the, um, not only just within them, but like the play of like hierarchy mm -hmm. and like the throughout the show, but like specifically with the two of them is like Christopher recently made guy, Polly, you know, kind of a captain, someone who is a mentor to him, but also like they don't see eye to eye all the time. Um, and then you see a lot of that with like situations with Ralphie. You saw it with like Junior and Tony's dynamic at some point. But like, it always breeds conflict. Like sometimes this hierarchy like clearly causes people to to you know have conflict with each other. And you could see here where like 
Not always this hierarchy mean the person's gonna make the right decision because Paulie's the one who got them into this whole mess. Mm-hmm. And you know, Christopher's being a good sport. He's not saying anything about it, but uh, we'll see if Tony presses him at some point uh, on what actually happened. Do you think there was any sort of symbolism with them being in this trapped in the situation that they were? Do you think there was a significance to that? Yeah, I'm sure there's probably a bunch of different symbolisms. I don't know if there's like a one specific one that I would point to. I feel like with like cold, like you're left out in the cold, mm-hmm. um, left to kind of your own devices and whatnot. I think there's also like a little bit of um, like they're lost without their leader. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they're without Tony, they're like helpless. These two, um, they can't think for themselves. They can't get themselves out of situations like this. And Tony's kind of realizing like, he gave he gave them the option like you take care of this how you see fit and he they literally couldn't have done a worse job um so i think a little bit of that i think there's also the the just general theme of like you're fighting like chechen chechens at this point and like you took them to their element they, they're not smart enough to know these kinds of things right like you take a chechen guy to the middle of the woods in the winter and like he's like having his monologue talking to them being like I'm warm. Like, this is nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this guy is, is going to ruin everything for them. But, but yeah, bro, what an episode. Crazy episode. Um, There was a, another dynamic, right? We had, so Jackie Jr.'s relationship with Meadow crashed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Gloria Cho's relationship with Tony crashed. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to know, was there, the parallels were still, were there as they were in the last episode? What stood out to you in this specific episode? I think what stood out to me is like you can see what the priority is for each of the kind of men in the relationship here. So like in Tony, Tony's world, like the most important thing is the business, the family, like all that stuff comes first, whether it's with Gloria or with his own family. Like you can tell that that stuff he has to prioritize. Um, What I see in Jackie's is he's like prioritizing this other life. Right. And prioritizing like the cheating, the having fun, riding the highs, like like a stupid little kid. And. I can just you can see the parallel of them not prioritizing their relationships and even whether or not if the Gloria and Tony relationship is bad or good, like he's clearly has other things in his life that he needs to prioritize. And that doesn't sit well with Gloria, kind of the same way it doesn't sit well with Meadow. Obviously, it's different because Jackie's cheating and like she has the whole right to feel that way. But there's just this parallels of. There are bigger things. There are more important things in my re- in this relationship that this these people are distracted by and focus on that takes away from the relationship and causes conflict. Yeah. Um, the ending of this episode was huge. Yeah. Um, because we we always love it when Tony comes to a realization of of who he is and and how he was raised and trying to conceptualize you know his situation right. Yep. And something big just happened where. He has these um, these mistresses, mm-hmm. um, and he can never please them. No. There's always a complaint. Always. And that parallels to who? To Livia. To Livia. Always. <laughs> what is the significance of that? This was huge. I feel like that was a big moment for, for Tony's character. Yeah. I think... Um... With his mom, like it was very, it was very clear his relationship in the beginning of the show was always to like try to please this woman, even though he knew no matter what, like he couldn't, right? And I think that it's clear that uh, Melfi is trying to point to that parallel in his relationships that he chooses with his mistresses, because both Irina and Gloria are both like emotionally unstable women that can cause like a lot of friction in his life, but like. The little points where he can please him is almost like the points that he's never been able to please his mom. Like he gets a little bit of that, but he knows at the end of the day, like the sentiment is still the same. The person never fully, um, you know, appreciates everything and and you can never like fix them in the way that Tony wants to. You know what I mean? Um, And you can and he can never please them. So I thought that that was uh, interesting. I mean. Obviously, we've seen stuff like this before. The Freudian kind of, you know, mm-hmm. people have relationships with their mothers and that stuff creeps into their, their um, you know, relationships um, romantically. And I think that uh, Tony, I'm curious, to me, it showed the way that it ended. It was like she presented that realization and then it like cut away and like faded to black kind of. And usually we don't see him kind of like. To me, it showed like acceptance almost a little bit. Yeah, he didn't argue. He didn't he was, argue. He just 
Yeah. Just, he just, just kind of started thought. acknowledging it, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, to me, that shows that it's like sinking in a little bit. Because uh, usually stuff like that happens. What does he do? He goes lashes out. He lashes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. This says like, I can't believe you're doing this, blah, 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 and deflects. That showed me that there's something here that he's actually like resonating with. Um, and maybe it's just he's been doing therapy for a while. A while. Like now he kind of knows like, bro, Melfi does know <laughs> what he's talking about. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, that's a it's an interesting realization to come to. I don't know what it changes for him. I don't know if it changes the way that he acts or the way that he goes about life. But um, it's interesting to see the way it was portrayed anyway in the show, like the acceptance of it. Where do you see Carmilla in all of this? What makes her stand out to you in in these situations that occur? I mean, in all of this, it's like she she is like a ride or die, right? Uh, cliche to Tony, and it's a uh, it's interesting because I think the only way potentially that Tony you know grows in some of this is like for her to face his shit head on and like really present it to him. But right now, she kind of doesn't know what that is, and it, she's in a weird predicament too, where. I think she knows that there's something going on. Um, I don't know about like the cheating part, but like, but I think that she's not um, saying much because she is okay with where they're at right now. Like mm-hmm. in the beginning of the show, they presented, you know, we're fine. I think it's the therapy it's working. And it's almost like Carmela in the beginning few seasons, like she would really like examine things. And she was like very detective, like, but like even when something was going well, now it's almost like she's like leveling out a little bit and being like things are going well i'm just gonna take it um and it's almost like she has a, her own version of acceptance of what it's like being with tony okay so do you think she's becoming more complacent yeah but it's less of a it's it's less of a like a i'm just letting it happen and more of like a passive acceptance if that makes sense it's like it's like this stuff is happening and it always causes conflict but right now things are okay um, and I know that at some point it's going to go to shit. So mm-hmm. I need to, that's how I see it anyway. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm off, but that's the way that I see it going for Carmela. is like, there's been so many up and downs in this relationship that sometimes you just need to wear for her. It seems like it's fine. She just needs to ride it out. Mm-hmm. There was, sad. <laughs> th- yeah, there, there was, um, a, a very interesting, um, thing that occurred in this episode specifically around the family and the mob ties on how tony prioritizes the mob versus his family so we saw um carmela's father came in and and her mother Mm -hmm. with horrible news yep tragic news and um that he ended up being diagnosed with glaucoma right and tony ends up taking a phone call and he's freaking on the phone and then he comes back and he can't even process the news he completely he doesn't even acknowledge it. Yeah. Um, with that, with that dynamic, what is what stood out to me is that, wow, um, his priorities are all over the place. Specifically, yeah. when there is um, something that is going down in the mob that he, that needs his attention, he can't. He's yeah. solely focused on that. Yeah. Um, and makes me wonder, like, when mob stuff is going down versus when family stuff is going down, he can't balance that well. Yeah, it's tough too because. They're, that, they're like, all interchangeable. Yeah, but but also like think about it this way, right? Like the what the way that I see him with the mob and the actions he has to take is like a lot of this stuff ends up being like life or death. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like yeah. maybe it's not his life or death, but like Paul Someone and Christopher out there. And like the whole situation that they've created could be life or death for the family and like everything, you know, everything else, like the amount of conflict that they can have. But again, like he has nobody outside of this that he can talk to. Not even Melfi. You know what I mean? Not even like fully describe the details of the priorities that he has. Like I feel like the only person that could potentially do something like this, and I I don't know how people see it, and and maybe this is the the way that relationships are with the mob, right? Like the and then in mobs, like Carmela and Tony, they have this relationship. She kind of has this unspoken understanding with him of when business shit happens. Like, he has to take care of it. But she doesn't really understand details. And I almost feel like he needs, like, that partner in crime to under- to not, like, she doesn't need to be involved in all the day-to-day, but, like, to know what's happening outside of the cheating, of course. <laughs> yeah. But, like, 
somebody that he can come to the side and be like, yo, there's some real shit happening. Like I have to take care of it. And just that level of honesty, I feel like would free him up a lot and also, you know, mm -hmm. provide some understanding. But then again, he wants to keep that boundary. Yeah, exactly. The conflict is that he doesn't want to involve his family. Yeah. Yeah. The conflict is that he, 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 ha again, he has this, um, juxtaposition, this like internal battle of like, he does what he does to take care of his family, but at the same vein, like any sort of crossover into that world, he sees as like the worst thing possible um, because he knows the potential hurt that could come to the people he loves if he allows that to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, going back to um, Pine Barrens, where uh, Christopher and Polly were, what I loved about this episode was the power dynamic mm -hmm. and showcasing like when you're basically fighting for your life, your title does not matter. Mm -hmm. like this 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 mob stuff yeah it's done i love christopher said like we're just two assholes in the woods like mm -hmm. at this point you know what i mean like i don't care <laughs> you know what i mean like if you were if you were stuck in the middle of the woods the president of the united states and like after 24 hours like screw the fact that he's the president he's just some other asshole i'm out here. <laughs> like, yeah. like uh it's freezing my ass off with um so yeah i agree there's that there's that piece to it and then i think the other dynamic that i thought was interesting was the the scene where christopher kind of confronts polly about you know oh yeah you're gonna choke me uh -huh. like all this stuff and it's like damn these are the guys that you're supposed to trust 100 percent. and look what happens at you know your life and death life and death you still can't 100 percent trust this guy that you know uh you're supposed to look up to and everything and i thought that was really interesting dynamic because at the end of the day we have seen in the past within the mob that you may be like loyal to folks but like people have their own best interest in mind you know what i mean that is what happened with pussy he had his own best interest in mind he had to get out of the the shit that he put himself in with selling heroin and that's why he read it Polly doesn't want to get in trouble with tony knows he messed up knows that Christopher is the one person that can point the finger at him. And this is where that conflict arises again, where like they're kind of looking out for themselves. Um, even though we view Polly as like one of the most trusted and loyal soldiers, right? That part I think is super interesting because even in the face of death and all of this like stuff, he's still worried about oh, if Tony really finds out what happened or blah, blah, blah. Like they might, he might see me as different or he might demote me or he might, whatever. Like that kind of stuff is, I think a super uh, interesting to see because not only is like the environment out there to like basically kill you, like the place that you're in, you might get hypothermia, you might die, you might starve. You're still worried about the pressures of the mob and the construct and all the stuff that could happen. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts. Cause they were there doing mob duties. Yeah, right. Yeah. But then it turned into what you were saying before, like fighting for your life, mm -hmm. but also it, while you're fighting for your life, you're thinking about your job. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about, shoot am i gonna get popped because of this am i gonna mm -hmm. it's it, wow yeah <laughs> yeah also like it's funny because they've only been thinking about themselves mm -hmm. but these dudes are not thinking about what tony's thinking about which is the broader repercussions of potentially letting this guy go yeah. like valerie clearly is a crazy man and if he makes it out alive we've already seen what slava what Said his relationship him. Yeah. with him is and how he would do anything for him. The second that this man comes back and says what happened, it's a war. In my eyes, it's a war. There's yeah. no way. And there's no, and, and Slava knows, like these people all know, there's no way that um, the boss of the, of the family or the organization doesn't know what's happening. Because he asked Tony, he's like, oh, did he get Silvio's money? He's like, oh, I wasn't there. I don't know. You, if, if this comes out, he's going to know that's bullshit. And that relationship is going to be severed. And it's bad because... This is the first time I feel like we've seen like two opposing mob families kind of like have a very synergistic business relationship like this. And Polly's the one who messed it up and it could like not only just messed it up, but could cause like straight up war. Yeah. And what set out to you about Polly's character? Something that's been kind of brewing because we saw from this since season three, he's he's a capper. Yeah, he, he lies. A lot. Yeah, he lies. Um, I think that it's again the 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 selfishness the 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 um looking out for your best interests like he doesn't want to appear as though he's incompetent as though he's not a leader as though somebody can dispute his rank all that stuff and clearly when 
shit goes bad and he's at fault, he doesn't know how to respond to that. Um, and I think that it's showing a different side of Polly that we didn't really know because again, like from, from the earlier seasons, all, all I really could think about Paul is like loyal soldier, a little bit crazy, but you know, he's, he's mainly someone you can count on. This proves that maybe he's not, you know what I mean? Like these guys are all imperfect. And I think that, uh, he can cause you some serious problems. Yeah, I think what this season has doing really well is showing the uh, the imperfections of the mob mm. and people related to it and how they operate yep. in their day to day life. It's yep. been really, it's been really, really fascinating to see from uh, David Chase's writing in this season. And not even in their day to day life, but like in the constraints of the mob. Yeah, right? and how they operate. Yeah, yeah, because like there's all these rules, there's all these guidelines and things that you're supposed to follow within mm -hmm. this family, but like. Time after time, we're seeing people break it. Putting your hands on a made guy. Tony did that. Polly basically lying to the boss of the family. Like, all this shit. Um, it's, a, it's a problem. And, like, putting up all of these rules and guidelines in an organization, a family that truly, like, has questionable morality in the first place, I feel like it's a recipe for the disaster. Because... You know, you and I, if we're in this mob, we justify the, thing, the bad things that we do because it's for the betterment of the family, all this stuff. Now, if I am put myself in a situation that I need to get myself out with, of, like, I already have this, like, moral justifications of bad things that I can do. I can start applying that to myself. Like, oh, I did this because of that. And, you know, I, I need to take care of myself. And I just feel like it becomes a place where who can you really trust? Who can you really put your faith in? Who can you really rely on? Who's truly loyal that's the stuff that now i'm i'm finding very interesting with um the dynamics at play within the the players of tony's family to figure out are people truly loyal to you yeah mm. damn with that being said y'all thank you so much for watching and listening to this reaction and discussion what an episode man we love you guys and see you soon for more tony tuesday See ya.